Come with me now to the dizzy heights of artistic creativity as Neil Buchanan invites us once more into the breach for the last in the present series of Art Attack. This is an Art Attack? This is an Art Attack? This is Art Attack! <laughs> Hey, look at these fantastic old books I've found. Look at this. 100 years old. 150 years old. And what about this? I made it yesterday using one of these boring old writing books. Come and have a look at this. Take a book, any book you like. It can be one of those floppy exercise books, or it can even be a hardback writing book. And take some strips of Luro and just lay them on top of your book, like that, and then mix some PVA glue, two parts glue to one part water, and slot the glue onto your book and onto the loo roll. Just sticking the loo roll down on top of the book as you go. And you see what happens here? The loo roll soaks up all the glue and sticks it to the book. I'll just do a couple of strips here to show you, but you should cover the whole of the front of your book and the back of your book. It's also a good idea to do the inside of the book. I'll show you why in a minute. There it is. Now, the idea is to get it as flat as possible. I'll just do those two to show you. It doesn't matter if you've still got some crinkles in it, because that all adds to the old effect. Now, when you've covered your book, leave it to dry overnight, and you should have something that looks like that. And the reason I asked you to do the inside cover as well is because it stops it warping outwards as the book is drying. And then your book is ready to do your design. Now, you can do any design you like. I'll show you a couple in a minute but I'm going to design an old, ancient diary. Now, a lot of those old books had sort of very ornate hinges on them, so I'm just going to block that in very roughly to start with. One there, maybe one there like that. You don't have to be neat at this stage. And if it's my diary, then I'm going to put my initial on the middle, like that. And a lot of those old books had sort of metal tips to protect them at the corners with rivets in. So let's put those in, just there. And if this is going to be a personal diary, then I'm going to put a lock on it. So let's put a lock on there, like that, with a keyhole. And when your design is done, take some more strips of loo paper or tissue paper, and this time, dip them in the PVA mixture with your fingers. Squeeze out the excess like that. Look at that, it's a bit messy, so it's a good idea to put some newspaper down. And just use this pulp to build up your design into a 3D relief. Just pressing it on onto your book with your fingers like that and moulding it as you go. And build up the whole of your drawn design and leave that to dry overnight. And when it's dry, you'll have something that looks just like that. Look at that. And the PVA glue and toilet roll has gone all hard and stiff on the front of your book. And then paint your design. Now you can paint it using poster paint or acrylic paint but look what I've discovered, this stuff, boot polish. If you just rub on some ordinary boot polish onto the front of your book, just rubbing it in to all the cracks and creases like that. Look at that, getting all of your fingers and everything there. And it just goes into all those creases and gives this great sort of old leather effect. And this is just ordinary brown tan shoe polish. You can get it from any shoe shop. And go over the whole of your book, and when you've covered your book, paint the metal bits. Now, you can paint them white or silver, or better still, use one of these things, a gold and silver pen. And that will actually go over, or well, just about anything, really. It'll even go over the boot polish there that I've spilled onto that edge. There it is. Just going over all my metal bits. Again, I'll just do that lock there to show you. And when you've done the whole of your design, you can always go round it in permanent marker to make it more bold do a bit inside the lock to make it dark and you'll have something that looks just like that look at that there it is your own ancient personal diary and there's lots of different designs you could try try something bold and colorful or what about a design based on your own school uniform or even a design for your sketch pad try it yourself a 3d book 
Oh, they look great. Hello, it's me, the head. Just mix two parts PVA glue with one part water. Dunk your toilet roll and model with it, and you'll find you can make almost anything. Do you want to see what I made? I just made a mess. We did that very nicely and left all that seed to eat. To eat. To eat. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen one of these before? A correction pen. You can buy them from news agents or stationery shops and they're used for correcting typing mistakes. But as I don't type, I've been fiddling around with one of them and have discovered that they're really good for drawing with on dark paper. And it's just a case of drawing normally, but pressing with your thumb, and out comes all this white correction fluid, and it leaves a real clear white line. It's much stronger than a pencil crayon and easier to control than white paint. And there's lots of different effects that you can get. Watch this. You can get ordinary lines, just thin lines, by pressing normally. And you can get thicker lines, look at that, right through there, by pressing harder with your thumb. And if you press really hard, you get sort of splodges, like that. And in fact, if you don't press at all, you get these thin, sort of wispy lines that are also a very good effect. And you get lots of correction fluid in one pen so you can colour things in like that and it just feels like drawing with a white felt tip pen really look at that and I've also discovered that you can draw on almost anything with them which makes them great for labelling things with your name and again you just write normally 
pressing with your thumb. And they're good for decorating things. So watch this. A line, a few little wisps in the corner, and a line. I'll do that again. A line, a few little wisps in the corner, and a line. In fact, you can even draw on glass with them. I'm just going to hold this bottle close like that and watch this. You just draw on the bottle normally, press with your thumb, and the fluid goes onto the glass, a bit like enamel paint on those old decorated glass bottles. Look at that, those little gaps there. Make it look like an authentic old glass bottle. Brilliant effect, that. A couple of stalks down there. A few little petals. And there it is. Try it yourself. Experiment. Decorate a few things. Go crazy. Versatile things, you know, correction pens. Hello, my name is Shelley. I made this picture by using red, yellow and orange paint. And then I used black paper and cut out ships below it. And then I stuck it onto the painted piece. My name is Caitlin and this is my sunset picture. And I painted the sky first and then stuck on the black houses. Hello, I'm Katie. This is my sunset picture with two people flying a kite. Ah, what a brilliant effect. Sunset and silhouette pictures. Here's a great way of painting a sunset. Take some poster paint, red, orange and yellow. And if you haven't got any orange, you could always mix it using red and yellow. And then charge your brush up with plenty of water, dip it into your red paint, and then just start to paint stripes all the way across the top of your paper. Just going backwards and forwards like that, completely covering your paper as you go until you get about a third of the way down your paper. Then rinse your brush out and charge your brush up with some orange paint, plenty of orange paint on there, and continue where you left off, just painting orange stripes, and look what's happening. The orange is sort of merging into the red as you're going. And then when you get two thirds of the way down, stop again, rinse your brush off, and charge it up with yellow this time. And there we go, and you're just painting on the yellow paint and dragging down the orange as you go. And here's a good tip. As you get towards the bottom of your picture, just add in more water and it makes the yellow go fainter and fainter as you get towards the bottom and the horizon of your picture. And there it is. And then if you want, you can just charge your brush up with water again and go over the whole thing, just blending all these colours nicely into each other like that. Look at that. And your sunset, a picture on your paper in front of your eyes. And then leave your sunset to dry, probably overnight. And in the meantime, draw some silhouette shapes onto a piece of black paper. Now, you can draw anything you like. You can draw buildings, people, animals, trees, absolutely anything. I'm just going to draw a very simple bridge here to show you. But it's a good idea to draw your picture at the bottom edge of your black paper. And also use a coloured pencil so you can see it. There it is. And then cut your silhouette shapes out. And when your sunset is dry, just line your silhouette shapes against the bottom of your sunset. And of course, you can make it as complicated as you like or as simple as you like. Look at that. Just bring the bridge over to the tree there. And how about this? Look at that there. That was quite easy to draw. But it took me ages to cut those windows out. And it's as simple as that. And just line up the silhouettes at the bottom of your sunset and then glue them down. And there you have it, a sunset and silhouette picture. Try it yourself, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra.